All right, so what we're going to do is create a small world project by going up to File, Open, and I've got an image that I shot of a fence. So I'm going to click Open on that, and you can see there's the image of the fence. So we're going to get right into this, and we're going to move pretty quick. So the first step is I'm going to go Layer, New, via Copy. Now there's two ways that we could have done this. I could select from the menu, making sure that my background layer is highlighted, and click via copy. Or, let me just delete that, or I can make sure my background layer is selected and Command or Control J, and we get background copy. Now, make sure that the background is not selected. I'm going to change the name of this, and I'm going to call it Top. That way, when we talk about it, you'll know exactly what we're saying. Make sure Top is selected and it's highlighted in a different gray. And I want you to go up to Edit, Transform, and we are going to flip horizontally. So left becomes right and right becomes left. Now you can see that the top layer is selected over in my Layers dialog box, but I could turn the eyeball off and on. Now the layer is visible. Now it is not visible, but it's still selected to work on. So turn the eyeball on, make sure that layer is selected, and what we're going to do is add a mask. And the mask is down here in the middle. So the phrase that we use is white reveals, black conceals. So the mask is applied to this layer. And notice that I am highlighting the mask. So the bounding box says I'm working on the mask. So if I come over here to the brush tool, and I go up to the top here, and select uh, any brush. I'm going to use a soft brush, but it looks like it's a hard brush right now, so I'm going to drop the hardness down to about 20%, and that's about the hardness of the edge. And I'm going to bring this up to about 700. That looks good. And I'm going to click not on the image itself, but on the background canvas. Down here in the bottom, I've got the letter D, default, white and black. I'm going to click on that. When I click on that, it makes the foreground white and the background black. And if you remember what I said a few moments ago, white reveals, black conceals. So having a mask that is white means that it's going to show this entire layer. If this mask was black, this layer would be entirely hidden. So we select the mask, and down here, we flip the foreground color and the background color. So now, my brush is black. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint out this part of the house. Now, I'm not getting rid of it. I'm just concealing it. Remember, black conceals. So I've gotten rid of that. I want to make sure that the left-hand side of my image and the right-hand side of my image match up by pixels. So the left-hand pixels are the same as the right-hand pixels. The way that I do that is I go all the way down here. Now. I'm going to zoom in, Command plus, Command plus, Command plus. I'm going to hold the space bar, click and drag over. Command plus was to zoom in, space bar was to drag over. Now, the letter P on my keyboard, to the right of it are two brackets. Here's the left bracket, here's the right bracket. And what I'm going to do is make the brush smaller, and I'm going to clean this up. And I'm going to try it. There we go. I think I got that to match pretty good right there. So now that I've got that matched up, I'm going to come down to the snow. And it looks like I have to match up through this space also. So I will just clean this up. And let's see if I can get this to match up without having to affect the snow above it. All right. So let's just come here. Hold the space bar, move over. Looks like it's going to be somewhere in here. So I'll just clean this up. Try and avoid the top. I think that looks pretty good. Nobody's going to see that. That's the also the wonderful thing is that these small little things are pretty minor in the whole scheme of things. But I just want to keep those lines fairly consistent. There we go. Scroll down. Now this is the this is the one. We got to get this line to match up at some point in here. There we go. Somewhere in there. And then we'll clean up the snow. There we go. 
There we go. And we'll work backwards, spacebar, click and drag. So that looks decent, command minus, command minus. And then I'm gonna use the right bracket key to increase the size of my brush and just come back down here and clean this up. So now that I've got that part done, and I'll just go through here a little bit, clean that up. Okay, so now I know that the pixels on the left-hand side and the right-hand side are identical. Here's the, we're gonna merge this down. Now, if you can right-click, you would go not to background, but to the top layer. You would right-click and you would say flatten image or merge down. Because we only have two layers, you can merge down or you can flatten the image. If you don't have the ability to right click, make sure your top layer is selected and go up to layer, merge down. Now that it's on one layer, what I'd like to do, and this might seem a little bit crazy, this is a step to show you that the pixels on the left side of the image and the right side of the pix uh, image are lined up. We would go to distort and, oh, my mistake, let me find it again. We would go to filter, other, offset. And the offset, make sure your vertical is set to zero. And you can see that if we move our pixels, we cannot see where that seam is. That's a good thing. That means that we've done a good job of offsetting our image. I'll just click OK somewhere in there. It doesn't even matter. Now what I would do is I would go Edit, Transform, Flip Vertically. So the bottom becomes the top, and the top becomes the bottom. And I'm just going to check my crop. Uh, crop looks good. Always have the Delete Crop on, so just checking. So now what I'm going to do is go Image, image size, and I'm gonna make sure that this little chain icon is off, so no black on the background. And I'm gonna look at my two numbers. Whichever number is larger is going to be changed to the other number. So 3842 is going to be in both. 3842, and I'm gonna click OK. Wonderful. So this is where we're at. So I'm just gonna check, we're still good. Make sure that this layer is selected. Now, if for whatever reason, you get a lock that comes up here, double click that and it will disappear. I'll just click okay. Double click and it will disappear. At no point should that have a lock on it. But sometimes when we merge down or flatten the image, that lock comes up. So now that we're at this stage, we go filter, distort, polar coordinates. And it's rec to polar. That stands for rectilinear. So square pixels to polar coordinates. That looks good. Now we go edit, transform, scale. And I'm going to go command minus, command minus, command minus, so that we can see this and hold the shift key down so that we can constrain the proportions of the height and width. I think that's about right. Click somewhere and drag. I think that looks pretty good. And click the checkbox. Now to get the image to be full screen, you can see zoom in, zoom out, fit the area. So I'm gonna go Command Zero. Make sure, we've only got one layer right now. And I'm gonna put two adjustment layers on it. The first one I'm gonna work with is gonna be the curves adjustment. And you'll see that I'm going to put three dots. Let's make the darker darker. We can bring a little bit of detail into the snow and our mid-tones. Let's brighten our mid-tones just a bit so it gets a little bit contrasty. That looks pretty good. The only issue that I have is the middle. I think that middle area is too dark. So I'll select the mask, select a brush, and you can see the brush is pretty big paint with black and black is selected as my foreground color. But instead of 100%, let's go to about 50%. Click somewhere and here we go. And just click and roll through here. Now if I roll through once, I lose about 48%.
if I click again, I don't lose, I don't go to 96%. I go to 48% of what is left. So if it was 50%, I would in the first click, I would have lost 50. After the second click, I would have been at 75. So I think that's looking pretty decent. Now what I'm going to do is one last one is I'm going to go black and white, but here I'm going to change the blend mode of my black and white adjustment layer to luminosity. And the reason I'm going to do that is if you move the blues, look at this, you can affect just the blues. Here's the cyans. I can affect just the cyans. And the greens, there are some greens in there, maybe just a little, no, uh, just a little in the middle there. I see that. I'll brighten that right up. I don't know if there's yellows inside, but there's yellows outside. So I don't want that to be overpowering. I don't think there's any reds. Oh, there is some reds. That surprised me. So let's see if there's magentas. I kind of doubt it. Okay, so now that I've got that done, I am happy with the work. I'm going to right click and say flatten image. And when I went flatten image, you could see the lock came up. So I'm just going to double click that and make the lock disappear. I'm going to do this now. I'm going to go Command J, or again, Layer, New, Layer via Copy. Then I'm going to go Filter, Other, and I'm going to go High Pass. And the reason I'm doing that is I want to create a little bit of contrast on the edges of this image. So we'll just wait one moment, let the machine catch up. Oh, way too much. Let's try again. So we're going to go somewhere that's not bad, but maybe just a little bit lower. That looks good, 5.5. And I'm going to click OK. Now, you may say to yourself, well, that doesn't help. All I'm interested in is where the edges are. And by changing the blend mode to either overlay, soft light, or hard light, we're able to make those edges stand out a little bit better. There's hard light right there. Here's soft light. And you can see before and after it does a little bit here's overlay there's after and there's before i like overlay i don't find that to be too overpowering i think hard light was a little too much yeah hard light was a little too much so i'm going to stick with overlay and i could also change the opacity bring that right down i always start at zero and i work my way up that way once i like the effect i can stop so once I'm done with that, I would right click and say flatten image. And again, when I flatten the image, you can see the lock comes up. File, export as a JPEG and save your workout and you are done.